So the Academy Awards were Sunday, last night or the night before, depending on what day you're watching this and this gets uploaded. The big question, how did they do? Let's talk about it. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. If this is your first time here, like the video, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel, or if you're listening to this on your favorite podcast app, make sure you're leaving us a review and a rating and you're getting in touch with us to let us know what you think about the show and what we can be doing to improve. As I mentioned in that intro, we just had the Academy Awards, the biggest, the most prestigious awards ceremony for movies. If you are someone who cares about movies, well, then... This was the night for you. So for starters, I guess the one thing that we need to address would be that the Academy pushed the start time an hour earlier. It started at 7 p.m. in an attempt to kind of like make sure that it doesn't drag on too late into the night. I think that it brought in like at its peak like 1.19 million viewers, something like that. Um, maybe I'm reading the numbers wrong. I don't remember exactly what, what the totals were. Uh, which I think is a little bit better than in previous years, but it's still like not great. And here, here I, I guess is like the big thing that I noticed with the Academy Awards. I mentioned this to my wife as we were sitting on the couch at 9 p.m., two hours after the start time, in which they had only announced about half of the categories. Only about half of the show like was over. And I think that like the big thing right like right like the, they were hosted by jimmy kimmel they obviously did a lot of barbenheimer like bits on the show and i think like this is if we're seeking to make cuts in order to make the show like more digestible for audiences a i think they they really need to go about like the same route that the sag awards did and it needs to be on a streaming service it needs to like not like a Paramount Plus or like a Peacock, like a streaming service that people have. It should be on one of the big three. It should be on Netflix, Hulu, or HBO. Like it should be on one of those platforms to draw in like the most, like people don't have regular TV and if the, the streaming services that people start cutting are these ones that are network specific, that are Peacock, that are Paramount. And so I think to get the maximum audience, like it should be on readily available for people and like the the fact that like you have to google before the oscars even starts where where can i even watch it that's a big barrier because the more barriers you place in front of people for them to even find your show to watch the more difficult it's going to be and then the other thing that i noticed and this this has to do more with like the nominations because there's kind of like two sides of the oscar brain if you will there's the oscar brain that is like in its nominations and then there's oscar brain like for its winners now, if you look at the nominations, you can see like, oh, well, this is like a, this is a fairly, you know, diverse group of nominations in terms of like art films versus commercial movies and stuff like that. If you want to make claims about representation in terms of like the kinds of people that are nominated, I think a lot of those claims are still fair. But in terms of like how movies were distributed, if they were big, bigger movies or if they were smaller, like low budget movies, like literally the year before, like everything everywhere all at once it was the movie that dominated the academy awards which is a relatively small movie and now winning an academy award is a good way for people to want to check out your movie but another thing that you could argue hurts ratings for an award show like the academy awards is the fact that a lot of the movies that were winning were movies that you probably if you're a casual movie viewer did not watch you know, like American Fiction wins Best Adapted Screenplay. If you just look at the box office numbers for the movie like American Fiction, it didn't do very well. People really didn't see that movie. It supposedly is doing very well on like a service like Amazon or like a, on renting services on digital platforms. It seems to be garnering some kind of like an audience. But is that audience big enough for you to like be tuning into the Academy Awards to root for it? You know, like poor things brought home quite a few awards for production elements and stuff like that. How many people were watching that movie? You even you look at like those two movies, right? Like they were two of the more nominated movies, poor things being the second most nominated movie. And like, who are these movies for? Like these movies are for people that care about movies that care about cinema as an art form. Like 
casual viewers like my mom or like your mom, like we're not going to theaters to see poor things. Like even if you just look at people who call themselves critics on YouTube, if go look at what they've reviewed in the past few months, it's not American fiction and it's not poor things, you know, like they, there, there seemingly is this divide in the Academy Awards. And I think that this is kind of where the Academy Awards needs to start picking a side as to who its audience is and what this award show is for, right? Because I would argue that it's trying to have its foot in kind of both lanes. It wants to put in like the more mainstream movies, you know, like Barbie and like Oppenheimer and like nothing like, like I'm not saying those movies are bad, but I'm saying like it, those are the two movies that dominated the box office. So they want to have those in there because there's a good chance you've seen it. They can use those in the marketing to draw people to watch the award show. But then when you look at all of the other nominees, right, you look at Anatomy of a Fall. You look at Past Lives. Kills of the Flower Moon arguably is probably one of the bigger movies that people know of and have seen. But then you go a little bit deeper and you go into The Holdovers or American Fiction or like these are the movies that people – maybe have heard in passing, have maybe seen a trailer for, but have not watched. And then these were the movies that were winning. You know, The Zone of Interest, probably the best movie that came out last year, is probably criminally underseen, and just because like it hasn't played in that many theaters. It hasn't played that widely in the United States. Wins best foreign film, right? wins best sound like this is probably the first time a lot of people are even hearing about this movie and so the academy seems to try to have its feet in two separate places it wants to nominate these like more well-known movies so that it can garner some interest and people will watch but then it ends up awarding the movies to like the awards tend to go to these lesser known movies like most notably barbie didn't win that much barbie did not win many things and you know Oppenheimer wins seven awards and poor things wins a few but other than that it's fairly well dispersed throughout the rest of it but this this I think is the problem and this is where I think the academy needs to pick a side and I think they need to either like just go gung ho and like we're going to nominate more popular movies that people have seen in the hopes to get attention and then the problem with doing that is that you will lose like rabid like film fans people that love movies that love cinema as an art form will stop watching your show because like you've you've stopped picking the movies that they cared about and that they were championing but on the flip side of that you could go in the direction that they seemingly are already going in with what they w nominate to win and what ends up winning at these awards is like they they can generally be the body of like these are the best of the best. Like you've seen in recent years, the Academy go more global, right? Like they're nominating foreign movies to win best picture, right? The zone of interest was nominated for best picture. You saw, I mean, obviously like an ad, I believe, no, anatomy of all was nominated for best picture. I believe and you have Justine Trier nominated and you have like, they're, they're seemingly are trying to make an attempt for this to not just be the best American movies, but like the best movies in general. And if you want to do that, I think that that is fine, but I think that like you should be trimming out like some of these more well-known movies for spots that like that can showcase these more international movies. Now, Oppenheimer is like a very bad example and probably Barbie is as well because these were also like critically acclaimed movies. Like these are movies that arguably deserved the awards and the attention that they got. Same with Killers of the Flower Moon. Excellent movies that probably deserved the attention that they were getting, but I'm saying like, this is, this is kind of where they're at. They're trying to have both sides. And I think that that is losing viewership because if you're there, because you know, you're rooting for Oppenheimer, or you're rooting for Barbie. And then you see, like, you keep seeing awards for, you know, the zone of interest. And then you see like, uh, jo joy, divine Randolph winning for the holdovers, or you see like, you know, uh, Justine Trier and Cord Jefferson that are winning the screenplay awards. And you're like, what the hell even are these movies? I've never heard of these movies. How are they winning? You know? How did they win over Greta Gerwig? I've never even heard of their movie. Like, this is kind of the problem you're running into. Because you're trying to appease both crowds. And I think, at the end of the day, I don't have all the answers, but I think you kind of need to go in one direction over another. And so, if, and then, if, when you're trying to, like, a, a win for Cord Jefferson, 
for American fiction, I think, pleases like these hardcore movie fans because it's a, an excellent movie that's very well written. And Corey Jefferson is very deserved of that re- award. But then when you get to other things and it's like, oh, well, you know, why are there so many nominees for this one? Like, Poor Things is winning all these awards. What is Poor Things? I've never seen this movie. So you see, like, the point I'm trying to make here is, like... They nominate all like the well-known movies, I think, to kind of get people interested and get them through the door, and then they end up like giving the awards to these like lesser-seen movies that probably deserve the awards. But that if you're a casual movie fan and watching the Academy Awards, you're going, "What the hell are these movies?" Or I've never seen them. Or maybe it entices you to watch them, but I think most of the time it leads to people being uninterested because it's movies they haven't heard of. I think that is the number one complaint that you hear about people as to why they don't watch the Academy Awards is like, oh, well, I've never seen them. So oh, I've never seen these movies. Like this is something my mom would tell me. My mom, who is like the reason I love movies, like let me watch a bunch of movies as a kid, would be like, I've never heard of this. Or same with like my stepdad. People that are just very casually watching things but like you need them to care and they go well i've never seen these why should i care that you're like you're nominating all these movies that i don't even know anything about i think this is kind of like the problem that the oscars are facing and i think either way either way they go they're going to lose viewership but they will get a more dedicated viewership and so i guess again i don't know if i have any solutions to this i don't i'm just kind of like addressing what i see just in terms of like g- the general audiences, people that I work with and stuff like that, talking about the Academy Awards, it like is a very like laissez faire, like, oh, I'd never even heard of this. Or, oh, like, what is it? Like, these are the problems I think the Academy will have to face within the next five years. It will really have to try to decide what type of award show it's going to be. And I think you will see some changes coming. And I think that they're inevitable. And I, they may not be for the best, but I think, you know, that's where we are. Like, movies as a art form like need to continue as core jefferson put it brilliantly in his acceptance speech like we need more smaller movies like instead of making a 200 million dollar movie make 20 10 million dollar movies and, like let's like save movies you know like let's not make them all just giant blockbusters and so i think that's my rambly thoughts about kind of just the award show as a whole now let's kind of talk about some of the winners obviously most notably Oppenheimer won best picture again I don't think this was a surprise to literally anybody um I I mentioned this in an earlier video like I think the problem with this year's Academy Awards was that you know it it seemed just kind of obvious that Oppenheimer was just gonna come through and win all the things and they kind of did they they missed some stuff that they were nominated for but yeah, you know, they they did walk away with seven wins, and that's that's good. I wasn't surprised to see Oppenheimer win Best Picture. It probably deserves Best Picture. It's not my favorite movie in here. Like I would have given it to The Zone of Interest, but given that The Zone of Interest won Best International Film, that seemingly like is the Academy recognizing that it, it is a great film, that is an important movie, and so I'm I'm good with that. And I think the Academy did other things to recognize other movies because they knew that Oppenheimer was going to get Best Picture. Like, given Justine Trier, like, the best original screenplay for Anatomy of a Fall makes a lot of sense to me. Like, that is, like, yeah, very clearly. Like, this is, like, one of the best movies of the year, and it wasn't nominated for Best Foreign Film. That's France's fault, not the Academy's fault. And so they, they, they found a way to recognize that movie. And I think they did a lot of things like that that I would like to see going forward. Instead of one movie sweeping, coming through and sweeping all of these big categories, like share the wealth. Like don't just recognize one movie over and over and over again. Like let's like celebrate all of these movies. And I I do think legitimately they did a good job with that at the ceremony. You know, you had uh, Cord Jefferson, like I mentioned, win best adapted screenplay. I'm very very shocked that that did not go to Greta Gerwig and Noah Baumbach for Barbie. I thought the Academy would really try to find a way to recognize Barbie in some way, shape, or form through like one of the major categories. And whether that was going to be like a weird upset win for Ryan Gosling and Best Supporting Actor or a screenplay win or something like that, like they, I, I honestly thought that was the route that they, they would go, and they didn't, which I was, I'm genuinely shocked by that. 
But then, you know, you have Killian Murphy winning Best Actor. It's fine. Like, like, I think Best Actor had five nominations that were really good and that any of them deservedly should win. I do think Actress, Best Actress, is interesting, right? Because obviously we had all the controversy about no Margot Robbie or Greta Gerwig. And I, honestly, Greta Gerwig, I'm sorry, but I don't see room for you in Best Director. Margot Robbie, I think, is arguably the one that should have been in the nominations because I think that you could drop Carrie Mulligan or you could drop Annette Benning, and you could put Margot Robbie in there. I really think that, that that you could do that. But Emma Stone wins her second Academy Award, and that's historic. That's important. Like, not many people win multiple Academy Awards. Actors, I should say. Not many actors win numerous Academy Awards. So that's a big deal. I mean, I, I do think it should have gone to Lily Gladstone or Sandra Huller. Um, I really liked Emma Stone's performance in Poor Things, but... I don't know. I just, I just think those other two performances were, were better. But the, again, Emma Stone, because of the nature of what is going on in Poor Things, it is a it is a much more controversial performance. It is a much like the word people would always use is like it's a it's a brave performance, like because there's a lot of nudity, and there's a lot of sexual content in that movie, and so that that requires a lot of an actress. So that it, it is like a big performance for her because you have to you're gonna have to take on. You know, the stigma of all that and all, like, you're going to have to bear it all on screen, as they say. So, yeah, I do think, like, she's deserved of the award. I just personally would have liked to have seen it go to, like, Lily Gladstone or Sandra Huller. So, like, I think that I just love those two performances from the year. I just think that they really deserve it as well. And unfortunately, the award can only go to one person. And then you had Robert Downey Jr. win, which, like, good for him, you know? Big career bounce back, even though Jimmy Kimmel makes some awful, like, offhanded jokes at his expense because he's a former drug addict, which is like, fuck you, Jimmy Kimmel. Like, that's awful. That's a terrible thing to do. Like, okay, yeah, haha, so funny. Like, you had, you struggled with drug addiction. What, like, I, this is like, when you're looking to shave time from the award ceremonies, like, cutting monologues and cutting bits and, like, cutting, like, all of the stuff that nobody really cares about, that nobody ever looks back on and is like, man, I'm so glad they had John Cena come out naked. I'm so glad that they did that. Like, I, I, I just like, cut all of this garbage. It's never funny. It never, like, because, like, all, every single joke that's made is so, like, about the current moment in the Academy. Like, the, none of this ages very well. Like, I would, I would love to see... Jimmy Kim will have less bits and less jokes and just like, does this get to the awards faster? But yeah, Robert Downey Jr. wins. I don't think this was a surprise to anybody. I think people saw this win coming a mile away. I would have liked to have seen it go to Mark Ruffalo or Sterling K. Brown, but I'm not, again, it's fine. You know, like this is kind of where I just kind of like, okay, like this is when, especially since all of these awards are announced somewhat later, and this is kind of when it's just like Oppenheimer. Oh, and then Oppenheimer. Oh, and then and then Oppenheimer. Where like for like the first half of the award show, they didn't really win anything, and it was all going to all these other things. And then they start announcing like the bigger categories, and it's like and Oppenheimer and then Oppenheimer, and like this is when it gets kind of tiresome for the same movie to just win over and over and over again, like. They obviously know the winners going into the show, so maybe they should restructure the show every year so that you're not just announcing the same movies over and over. Like, if you know that Killian Murphy, Robert Downey Jr., Christopher Nolan, and, you know, that Oppenheimer is going to win Best Picture and Best Score, like, to try to, like, focus those, like, in different areas so it's not just back to back to back. Like, like announce Best Director first. I think I don't understand the ordering of the awards and it's just like oh we need to save best director best actor and like best actress and best picture for the last four and it's like you really don't like you could announce them whenever you know no one's gonna care just announce them whenever uh divine joy randolph wins best supporting actress that is well deserved she's phenomenal in that movie um i don't think anyone else really stood a chance at beating her because she is so good in the holdovers so well deserved congratulations Best Achievement in Directing goes to Christopher Nolan. Again, well-deserved. I I don't think that this was an obvious win. I think this was kind of like... I would have loved to have seen 
any of the five win. I think any of the five deserved it. And like, I typically don't like best director and best picture going to the same movie. I think this could have been a way to recognize the talents of other filmmakers. And it's like Christopher Nolan's going to win the Oscar for Oppenheimer. Like he's a producer on that movie. He's going to get one. Like maybe give like maybe use this as an opportunity to shine the light on something else. Like give it to Martin Scorsese. You know, give it to Yorgos Lanthimos. Give it to Jonathan Glazer. Like I, this is the this is the odd man out year where it's like Christopher Nolan deserves an Academy Award and he's he does not have one until the other night. Like I'm glad that he finally got one for all that he has done for movies and like for cinema in general and for like trying to make big movies and trying to save film stock and for always like just, just demanding that these movies be made and shown in these scales. Like the man has done so much for the community of just movie loving and cinephiles and all that, that he deserves the most prestigious award available to him. And then you get into some of the more like technical awards, you know, you have um, Oppenheimer winning best cinematography and best film editing. And even though like, I kind of agree with cinematography. It should win that. I don't agree with film editing. I do think this should have gone to Anatomy of a Fall. Like I, like I mentioned in the technical awards section, um, production design and stuff. Again, like these awards that I thought would go to Barbie that kind of ended up going to poor things. And I'm not like upset about it. Like same with costume design. Like I'm not like, it's not, it's not that I don't think that poor things deserved it. I just am kind of surprised that like with all of the talk of snubbing and stuff like that of the Oscars and like of Barbie in general, like I'm, I'm kind of shocked they didn't get more of these technical awards where like, you know, Barbie does look good. It does, It is a good looking movie. They did like produce the shit out of that and design the shit out of that movie. But I don't, I don't decide who wins these. And so I guess what's, what's the takeaway from all this? How did the Academy do? And I think they did fairly well. I think they did fairly well. I mean, this was an odd year because of the strikes. So some movies got pushed back and they weren't allowed to be played. And so that's, I think 2024 will be an interesting Oscar years because we're getting some more of these movies. But I do think, like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, that the Academy seemingly is shifting towards like we want to showcase the best possible movies. And if that is the movies that you haven't heard of, well, maybe this is a way for you to go check them out. Maybe this is your reasoning to go check them out, and you should do that. And I'm, I think I'm okay with that. I think I'm fine with that. I'm fine with them being like – shifting focus into just these are the best movies regardless of where they are released and i would like to maybe even see them expand the foreign category and like introduce more and maybe don't let the countries tell you what movies they're going to like maybe we like the academy should decide what foreign movies they will like like for a movie like the taste of things to not be nominated as best foreign language or like anatomy of a fall not be nominated for best foreign language movie like that is insane and it's because we're like the countries are telling us what they would like to be like in consideration but maybe we should all these other countries have their own award shows and so like maybe this could be a way for us to like prop up other foreign movies and to get people interested in movies from all over the world and i didn't i, I do think that they should be including more categories, less bits, like any any chance you have to award numerous movies to get more movies into the conversation, I think that is the direction the Academy needs to go in. It needs to be more encompassing. It needs to be just like better at not just nominating the same movie 15 times and like actually spreading the wealth. Now, I'm not saying there's like there should be like a cap to how many Oscars a movie can win or be nominated for, but you know, Oppenheimer was nominated for 13. And so that's 13 slots that potentially go to another movie that you can if, – if this truly is about the best movies and if we can really like start to talk about like just – this is an award show for people that love movies. Well, you know, you're, you're taking a lot of time away from other movies, smaller movies that maybe need the recognition to talk about the same movie seven times. You know, like – Again, not saying they didn't deserve any of those awards or the people that work on those movies didn't work very hard on those movies. But I would like to just see them share the wealth a little bit more, incorporate more things, more categories, whatever you need to do to get more movies into the Academy Awards ceremony. I think that is better for everybody. That is better for audiences because they have – there's more of a chance that you've seen some of these and might care if they win. 
and there's just more ways to like celebrate people within the industry who are working on these movies and just more ways for more movies to get recognition and celebration. So that is what I would like to see the Academy going forward. Again, I think they did fairly well not just giving everything to Oppenheimer and really like picking some moments to truly like indicate some smaller movies that maybe now because of it you will go check out and watch. You know? Like I said, The Zone of Interest, Anatomy of a Fall, American Fiction, and like these are some of the best movies that came out last year. And like a movie like Poor Thing, like these are four of the better movies that came out that are available for you to watch. And again, like people, even people that claim to care about movies on their YouTube channels and on like claiming to be film critics and on Instagram, like even they weren't talking about these movies. And so, like, I really. I really think that this is a way to showcase these movies, get people interested in them, get people talking about them, and then maybe they get seen by more people. And then if they get seen by more people and they make more money, maybe we can get more like them. Maybe we can get more movies like this and not just $200 million blockbuster movies. And so, yeah, I would like to see them cut down on the antics. I would like to see – I still think you can add more categories and shrink the, the, the award show in general. Like I think starting it earlier – that's a good call. I like that call. And I just, I still, but I still don't get why this show is going until past 10 o'clock if you're starting an hour earlier. Like, get rid of the fucking nonsense. Get rid of the bullshit that nobody cares about. And the skits and the, oh, isn't Jimmy Kimmel so funny? Oh, aren't these actors so funny? And we're like, we don't care if Ryan Gosling is relatable. We care that he's a great actor and that he puts out good performances. Like, let's let's talk about the work. Let's talk about the movies and less about the, the the antics and all that. Like, that is what I would like to see the award show become. And I think maybe we are taking steps to get there. So hopefully that's better for everybody who cares about this stuff and who cares about movies and who loves movies. I'm hoping that we get there. That is all I have for you today. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Let me know what you think about the Academy Awards and who won and who didn't win in the comments down below. We can continue the conversation there. If you're listening to this on your favorite podcast app, leave us a review, leave us a rating. My personal email and Instagram are down in the comments below. Reach out to me. Let me know what you think. And until next time, keep watching good movies, everybody. Goodbye.